Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what are my favorite fields, theorems, whatever, bias perspective as usual. Um, today something that is actually quite fun and sadly not uh, as developed as it deserves to be. So this idea of uh, that we mathematicians should work all together or maybe we as humans should work all together to get rid of all humans. Um, that sounds a bit weird. But yeah, anyway, so we as mathematicians clearly need to be spearheading this. So I work very hard and hopefully I will be replaced by AI at one point. That's kind of the idea. How far we are in this process is a very different question. Um, and I will tell you a little bit about what people have done in the past. And as far as I know, um, at least this part that I'm going to mention in this video, there hasn't been much progress in some sense since the 1980s, which is a bit, mm, yeah, a bit unsatisfying, if you want. Remember, we want to get rid of me because I'm producerless, so there needs to be an AI that does my job. Um, that would be much better, but it seems like we are not in a great state uh, as of 2024. Who knows what will be next year? I have no idea. But anyway, I will just focus on one tiny, tiny bit of this idea of getting rid of humans. Um, and as I said, we should do that as a species together. So no humans, please. Uh, so it all started, well, it's a kind of always a bit difficult to say when it started, but let's just say mathematics, at least in this video, is I want to talk about kind of automated conjecturing. Uh, so kind of mathematics is essentially about conjectures. I write here at least partially, but most of mathematics is actually not about theorems. It's really about having the right conjecture, whatever you call a conjecture, having the right definition or something like that, right? So knowing what you want to do is like a really key in uh, mathematics. And mm, yeah, it took a while, but roughly from the 1950s onwards, um, computers are a key in this, in this, in this business. Uh, they're really, really important. And the early example I know is one of the Millennium Prize problems, the so-called Birch, Swimmer and Dyer conjecture. It doesn't really matter what it is. This is a picture of it. Essentially, they com computed uh, a lot of data points and made some approximation and the conjecture is about the approximation and corresponding to what the data points are supposed to represent. And yeah, so this was only possible by doing lots of calculations. And yeah, lots of calculations usually mean means do it on a machine. But what I want to have in mind for this type of video is uh, kind of what I call the three stages of conjecturing. The one we see above here, the kind of most of it, like 99% of all conjecturing, uh, but when, when you have a computer, is computer assisted conjecturing. So you run a computer to make some calculations, make some nice plots or something. Um, and more modern, stage two, is AI assisted uh, conjecturing. It's kind of very different um, and has been become more and more popular, in particular in more discrete fields where it's kind of easier to implement the model machine. Um, yeah, so kind of essentially try an AI to get, uh, you have a conjecture, you want to maybe prove it or disprove it, create it, to use write AI, ask AI to create a sample of counter potential counterexamples, generalize the counterexamples and eventually produce a counterexample. This is kind of what this is all about mostly um, at this point, although we are making a lot of progress in this direction. And this is AI assisted. So you still need to tell the computer what to do. It just helps you in a better way than just writing a program that spits out a few numbers. So it helps you in a little bit of a better way. But what I really have in mind, right, I want to replace everyone, I want to replace myself, is, yeah. So can we do it without humans? So it's essentially no human input at all from one point onward. And people were thinking about this, as mean, it's not a really new idea, huh? trying to replace well, humans are kind of really bad i am really bad you're probably really good but anyway um so you're kind of trying to replace them is, is not a new idea and kind of the oldest one and some of the most successful one is related to graph theory so in the stage of automated conjecturing and it's actually pretty old right so it's from the 1985 that's like 40 years essentially if you watch this video in 2024 and forgive me my off by one error then it's 40 years roughly 
Um, yeah, and they, they, they essentially had a program in 1985, which they called Graffiti. Fine. And essentially they do the following. They feed in certain graphs. So here's a very tiny example, just, just a few graphs. And the graphs have properties, like they could be connected, or they could be a tree, or they could be whatever, bipartite, or regular, or something. And the graphs have numerical invariants associated to them. Yeah. The girth, the chromatic number, the matching constant, something like that. So something you would read off from a graph. And then the computer tried to, well, just made a big data search by matching graph uh, let's say coloring of graphs or whatever whatever it is like the adjective here you want to add connected tree regular bipartite and the value and got some conjectures out of it i'll show you an example in a second essentially by trying to well, lower and upper bound the few data points so here we have our graphs and maybe we pick out just the trees and we plot the trees here and maybe we have two values we want to compare we plot them and well it seems like there's some form of an upper bound that you can right down here and then you would conjecture what's going on. Essentially it's a data search. It's kind of a, a more sophisticated version of a data search. You just put all uh, kind of possible data together and whenever something is true over the whole database you call it a conjecture. Okay this is kind of very restricted. It's not ter terrifically smart. You, know? you get a lot of shitty conjectures because you just observe some patterns but you also get some good, good conjectures and somehow need to filter them. But what is really exciting is that there is essentially no human input at all. As soon as you ha it has it in its database, you don't tell it what to do. It just produces the list of pot potential conjectures by just mixing what you gave it, right? Yeah, so you, you gave it some graphs, some properties of graphs, and you just pick, it just mixes everything itself together. And this is what I would call, or people call, automated conjecturing. And it has been beefed up since, since 30 years ago, but it's essentially the same idea still, just whatever, the databases get better, the algorithms are smarter or something like this, right? Okay, so let me just, before I can state the theorem, just recall something for you. Um, essentially a property, a numerical property about a graph that you might want to compare, and this one is an interesting one, would be the alpha and the mu. So if you have a graph, the alpha is a maximal independent vertex set, so independent vertices just means vertices that are not connected. So like the blue ones here, the maximal set in this graph is nine. So uh, numerical invariant is nine. And kind of dual, the edge independent set mu is exactly the same. You just pick out a maximal number of non-adjacent edges where adjacent means something like this edge would be adjacent to this one because they share the same vertex, right? And it wouldn't be adjacent to this one because they don't share the same vertex. Okay, so these numbers should be somewhat related if you think about it, because one of them is about independence of vertices, which uses the edges, and the other one is independence of uh, edges, which uses the vertices. Well, there should be some relationship between the two, but it's clearly not clear at all. And the, con the, the graffiti actually found a relationship, conjectured it, and then it was proven, which is kind of really, really exciting, because this really not, was not clear at all. The, this was absolutely clear that there should be a relationship, but what could it be? Because so somehow vertices and edges are of course related, but somehow they're also independent from one another. But yeah, by a database search, um, Graffiti found the following, the following conjecture. If G is connected and regular, remember that we do something like we have graphs and we have conditions on graphs, and then we want to compare the various invariants. So regular just means um, every vertex has the same degree which gives a stronger connection between vertices and edges than you would generally have. Anyway, if that's true, then the matching number is always bigger or equal than the independence number. So mu is the matching number, kind of a strange name, it's kind of a weird name. It should be called edge independence number, but it's called matching number. Anyway, and alpha is called the vertex independence number, and yeah, so the conjecture is that mu is bigger than alpha. So mu is bigger than alpha for uh, regular graphs and it's essentially sharp so you can construct a regular graph um, where this is true where this is exactly sharp and it was later then proven and this is like a really good example of automated mathematics right so nobody was able to come up with a conjecture relating the two but the graffiti does the, the, the program did without any human input 
Okay. In in the meantime, it created like a thousand random, completely stupid conjectures, but they're also really good ones. And yeah, it, it created actually quite a lot, and there's quite quite some industry uh, working on trying to uh, prove the conjectures kind of created by this program. And sadly, there are still some humans involved because they somehow need to sort the conjectures by what is interesting, what is not interesting. But anyway, it's kind of the state of the arts as far as I know. And yeah, you can run that not just over graphs, you can run that over many things. So uh, properties of matrices. Determinant is smaller than the permanent. Determinant is smaller than whatever. Determinant is bigger than whatever. Something like that. So you give it a database of matrices, you give it properties like it could be an orthogonal matrix, it could be an Hermitian matrix, a symmetric matrix, name it. And you have some numerical invariants, a determinant, the number of eigenvalues, the size of the eigenvalues, something like that. And you just do the run kind of the same game. And many, many different things, um, it actually works really well. So many, many different things are now automated in the sense of conjecturing. And sometimes you get really, really good conjectures. The only problem that still remains, and as far as I know, there's no, no, no way to fix that right now, is that most of the conjectures are like, I mean, you just randomly mix some numbers. You essentially run over a database. So you just, and everything that is true over the database will be a conjecture. So you just sometimes randomly mix some numbers and you get like the boring type of conjectures. So somehow still the intuition of the program is missing. It just does everything. Huh? So it's this idea of, um, yeah, so you, you can of course solve a maze by just trying all possibilities. But you can be a bit smarter, maybe, right? So you could try to solve a riddle by just trying to, uh, by just going through all possibilities. But the human brain should be a bit smarter, and this kind of that step is still missing in uh, this branch of automated mathematics. So I'm still have my job. That's that's very disappointing. But hopefully, eventually, uh, some AI will replace me. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I also hope to see you next time.